So, do you want to use the new MacBook Pro with the M1 chip to live stream video games? Are you curious to see if it can handle it? Well, you've come to the right place. My name is Eduardo Torres and let's get started. give you guys a little bit of context i'm a huge avid video gamer i have been for the last decade i started early on with video games but then i took a five year gap and i just recently started getting back into it i got into it back because of my friend Chui. he got me back into it by introducing me to a couple of video game streamers that i now watch and love because it's just so entertaining to see them play those are like the likes of dr disrespect you know ninja aiden huskers Mainly all the ones that play Warzone and some that play Fortnite, like Ninja. With that being said, I was always curious to see what it took to create such a live stream. In today's video, I will be sharing with you guys my setup. Not exactly how I set up my sources on OBS or anything. I'm just going to be sharing my stream settings and components that help me like arrange all this. Don't eat me alive because I don't know my terms or what certain words mean. I'm no Gerald Undone. I mean, you could say amateur when it comes to terms or anything like that. Okay, so... Let's get started with today's video. Let me show you guys the setup. All right, so let's talk about some of the things I used, okay? So the first thing up is the video game console that is my choice and preference that I will be streaming. The new Xbox Series S, um, I picked it up just because it's a tiny form factor. I can't show it to you, but I'll definitely give you some B-roll of it. And I ended up picking it up just because it's a tiny form factor. It's in 2K, it, it outputs 2K display. Um, it doesn't take up much space um, and I've always just been a fan of the Microsoft Xbox series. This Series S has been kicking ass and it outputs 2K again like I said. So this is exactly the system that I wanted um, and again it was the cheapest too and it runs pretty badass Loki. The second thing is the game capture card. So for that I am using the Elgato HD 60S Plus. The reason why I went with this one and not the HD 60S, the regular one, is just because that one outputs 1080p. Like I just said, the Xbox outputs uh, 1440p, which is 2K, and this goes up to 4K 60. It outputs pass through HDMI, and I ended up going with this one just because it gives me better quality on my display. So that is why I went with this one. If you go with the HD 60, there's nothing wrong with that, but just remember that for example my xbox is giving a 1440p output if it passes through the elgato the elgato will then downscale it back to 1080. this allows me to stream to youtube well it allows me to stream to my laptop which then goes to youtube and the output of that is 1080p 60 so that's definitely good you could also live stream in 4k 30p but i think 1080p 60 is way better looks way smoother and it matches the video game you can also record from this um i didn't dabble with the recording i only dabbled with the streaming so i can't enter any recording settings or anything like that next up let's talk about the computer um, this is the computer i'm using the new macbook pro the m1 chip with the m1 chip in it this is the 13 inch laptop i just recently got this like couple weeks ago beautiful display love the keyboard hate the touch bar and yeah I, I think the only cons are just two ports but yeah that's about it that's that's the computer i will be live streaming off of and next up is the mic that's capturing my voice the rode ntg2 um paired with um an xlr to usb adapter so essentially i just plug this together and then i run the cable straight into the next um, device I'm gonna talk about, but it's essentially a USB hub with a ton of USB options. So this is to capture my voice on the stream. And um, so you guys can hear me like as I communicate to my teammates as well. The next important thing is this sucker. The CalDigit, I think this is the TS3 Plus. Essentially what this sucker is, it allows you to get more ports on your MacBook Pro. With one cable you attach from this to your MacBook Pro, you get an SD card reader, you get a headphone output, 
I don't know what the symbol is. You also get a USB-C, USB 3.0, and that's just the front. On the back, check it out, you get more USBs, four more USBs, you get the Thunderbolt that goes to your computer, you get another Thunderbolt, you get a display port, you get an audio, damn, I forgot what that one's called, digital audio output or input, I don't know, and then another USB-C, and then an Ethernet, and it's all powered by uh, a, a brick you plug into it by a 20 volt. 9 amp ones so this does take a lot of energy i got it on special on black friday for like 160 which is an absolute bargain in my opinion because i don't know where i'd be without it just because the macbook pro only has two ports imagine two ports and now plus all these 15 i believe ports that's that's crazy the next thing we're going to talk about is the streaming software i used is obs I ended up going with obs just because streamlabs wasn't reading the 2k display from the xbox which is which is a bit weird and then when i downloaded obs the video game capture card like automatically like picked it up so i went with obs it's a tried and proven software i can't recommend it enough now after using it it's so easy to use like it, it, it's it's a no-brainer i'd go with that Something else I used is I used the Dell monitor. It's just a regular 2K. Uh, it's a regular 2K display with 60 hertz. So I'm not getting the full 120 hertz the Xbox produces. I do plan on upgrading the monitor in the near future. Something else I use is this key light that's currently lighting me up. It's just the regular Godox LED panel. Um, cost me like 60 bucks. It's on a desk light stand that I picked up by newer, $40. And then. I also used the other video capture card that I was talking about was the Canon one, the Canon EOS R, the webcam I was using in my live streams, just because again, it's better than the one the computer has and it gives a nice depth of field, especially just more, more premium quality. I want to talk about, I was streaming onto YouTube just because, um, not that I don't like the, any, any of the other streaming um, platforms, but I just feel since I'm on YouTube primarily, like that's my number one go-to app, I feel way more comfortable streaming onto YouTube. Um, no hate to Facebook, no hate to Twitch. Lastly, my internet. For my internet, I have Spectrum and my current plan, I live in LA, I have 200 down, 10 up. So 10 megabytes upload. Um, that's important to know because I think later we'll talk about bit rates and how that affects the stream. Everything I have is wireless. I don't have anything plugged into my router. I just want to say that as well. So let's get into my setup and how I arrange everything. All right, guys, let's jump into my MacBook and let me show you guys my OBS stream settings. So let me open up the app. Again, this is not a native app to the M1. It is still going through the translation while it's being optimized to be used for the M1 chip. I just want to state that out there. So this is OBS. I have my scenes. I'm not going to go over the scenes or the sources or any of that just because I just want to show you guys my settings. I know other videos have better tutorials on scenes and sources and how to go about them. But for me, let me just show you guys the screen settings. Hopefully it's showing all these, but real quick, this is my general. Feel free to pause it at any moment. I'm not going to go through these. I just want to talk about the output and the video keys. I mean, in the video settings. For the very first stream, I was at 8,000 uh, bit rate, and then my keyframe obviously at two. I was at super fast, profile was main, and the encoder I used was not the Apple one, I used the X264, which is the program one. So, that's for the streaming setup for the very first stream, all right? Recording, I did not record audio, left that all the same, replay buffer, unchecked. All right, let's talk about it. The very first stream I did, um, also the video base resolution was 1080p and then the output was also 1080p. Just an FYI, I ignored this 2K, this this was 1080. Let's, let's just switch it so you guys don't get confused. It was like this. These were the exact settings of the very first stream I did. Again, I went with 8,000 um, bit rate just because my upload speed is 10. You could get away with 6,000, but uh, for the very first stream, this was the setting, right? CBR, rate control. It was the best looking stream out of all of them, but I did drop a crazy amount of frames. I just wanna let you guys know that. I dropped like 10% of frames in three hours and it was the best looking one in my opinion. Um, I don't know why that is. Um, I'll talk about some advanced, some better settings I use on the third stream, but I still like the way the stream looked. It looked the least jerky, it looked smooth, it looked amazing. And you guys can see that obviously in the description, I have the very first stream and then I'm gonna have these settings right there with them. 
So for the second stream, I did go with the Apple encoder. As you see, um, it gets rid of almost everything, right? Like you can't even play with anything, right? So I had this at 6,000 bit rate. Um, keyframe left it at zero on auto profile. I ended up going with high this time. And the video base canvas was still the same, right? I noticed using the Apple encoder, it was very, very laggy. Like the stream was just laggy, like dropping frames like crazy. The CPU usage, so for the first stream, the CPU usage varied from 10% to 20%. With the Apple encoder, it was actually at 10% the whole time. It rarely jumped to like 15%, which is great because it's not using that much CPU, right? But this with the apple encoder it just lags so much like it made the stream unwatchable like it would jerk drop frames crazy right um you could also check out that stream in the description and honestly like i just wasn't a fan of it um i streamed for three hours just like the first one and this one was just jerky all the time so i wasn't a fan of it and i was actually pretty bummed because i got a duos win with chewy and like i do not recommend this setting i feel it's just because OBS is not native yet to the M1 chip or else I'm pretty sure it would kick ass. Low-key, I feel it would kick ass. Um, I don't know if the rescale output being checked, like if that has anything to do with it. Again, I'm an amateur when it comes to streaming video games. This, this was just a, a Hail Mary. Um, so yeah, so going back to X264, my third stream, I tried to go max out all my settings, right? And by max out, I mean, I went back to 8,000. Maybe that has no effect on the stream, but maybe it does. Let's just let's pretend it does, maybe. Um, and I went to CPU usage medium, right? The higher, the less CPU. I did not read that the first time I ever streamed. I just thought ultra fast or super fast meant best quality and the quickest, right? Um, I went to medium profile main. This time I changed my output resolution. I mean my base resolution to 2K and then output was still 1080p 60. Still one of the 60 frames per second. And under this setting, oh no, it throttled this Mac. Like, and by throttled, I mean you still wouldn't hear fans because this thing is dead silent. Like, not like the previous Macs that you would hear them overload or whatnot. But my CPU right here, this was at 50, 60%. So I know it was really going down it was like dropping frames i want to say and like right away it was like very unstable actually like youtube even said it wasn't getting enough information and i was like what the hell so i ended that stream quickly um i actually even deleted it so that one i can't show you guys what happened to maybe get some feedback off you guys so i just wanted to share that i did try this setting and it's a no-go i wouldn't recommend it I went back to try to figure out my first settings and I went back to 6,000 kilobytes this time. I didn't want to use 8,000. And then I went to faster. I was like, you know what? Let's try that faster profile still main. I changed my, my video settings. Remember just 2K and then output was still 1080p and nothing bad. And I noticed the CPU usage here was varying from 25% to 40%. And sometimes it would encode overload but it would go away like within half a second or something. It would just pop up a little bit. And these were supposed to be better than my very first stream settings. And honestly, I just found it a tad jerky, but I wasn't dropping frames, which was crazy. So like you'd see the gameplay, but it wasn't smooth. It wasn't smooth like the first stream. And you, and you can notice that. I mean, to my eye, at least I can notice that. And I was just like, huh, like that's weird, right? So my thoughts on this, again, I would, I would stick to my first stream setup, um, my first streaming settings, my first stream settings, which were, I had this at 8,000. Again, I have 10 upload, 10 megabytes per second upload. Out of what I read on YouTube, it just has to be over 4,500, but I didn't experience, well, I didn't do an experiment with it at 4,500 kilobytes per second, just because I wanted it to be badass, like I wanted it to be sick, like I wanted it to be streaming at a high quality. Um, so I don't know, some people have tested it from other PC videos that I had seen on OBS that 45 is perfect. Um, but 45 is the 4500 is the bare minimum for YouTube out of what I out of what I was reading off their, their website. Um, Ray control CBR, I had this at two. I would then up it back to super fast or very fast. 
and then profile still at main and then I'd probably switch this back to 1080p um, just because I had the best the best stream settings um, there I just don't know if it's worth the frames being dropped again it was a very little amount of frames dropped but still noticeable to my eye that I just didn't like it like again I missed that one kill that just it would have been sick to capture because I had I was going off and it was it was cool to, you know see this back in replay it and be like damn i was sick and you know what not the moments again like i mentioned so yeah these would be the settings i would recommend at least for now till till obs is optimized that maybe this apple software encoder would be the best because again that uses the less the less amount of cpu out of all the ones i showed you um so that's my experience with obs and my stream settings um, on the macbook pro m1 again this is the maxed out version and yeah, I, I didn't have a crash on me at all. And I was running OBS and then I was running the stream in Google Chrome on on this MacBook. So I had the Google Chrome app open. Again, that drains more than um, more CPU than the Safari one. And I mean, again, it never crashed on me. It was never overheating or anything. So definitely badass in my opinion. Um, I think it would make for a solid streaming laptop but you just gotta like i learned you just gotta play around with the settings being the person that i am like a perfectionist and whatnot i really wanted it to be like right out the gate like badass um since i didn't experience that and it's more trial and error till you find your right settings and especially on this computer being that it's so new um i i just couldn't find them and that's the reason why you could say i'm giving up um I didn't plan on becoming a video game streamer or anything. Again, like I said, I just really wanted to capture those moments, like those funny moments on Warzone. Like it's it's a, it's always a blast, like reliving those moments. And for two hundred dollars, this video game capture card, I think it's really expensive, but it gets the job done. But I'd rather drop those two hundred dollars on getting like a better monitor, in my opinion. Um, I'll get a better monitor and then I'll just stick to the recordings off the Xbox um, even though it doesn't capture audio like like game game chat audio so I mean though those are essentially my thoughts um, if you plan on streaming this is this is more than doable just know you have to play around with your settings maybe these settings work perfectly for you um, again I only did four streams that's not a lot of testing i'm not gerald undone running a crazy amount of tests but this is all the testing i could do and again this video was made to show you guys my findings and what i found to be the best for me so yeah i hope this video helped out any of you guys that just picked up the new macbook pro or the new macbook air maybe on the macbook air runs badass too i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys have any questions feel free to leave comments below uh, i'll try to answer them to the best that i can yeah I hope you guys have a wonderful day and subscribe, like, comment, all that. My name's Eduardo. You can check me out at Eduardo Visuals.